Assalamu alaikum. My name is Dr. Fahad and today topic of presentation is Urology History and Clinical Examination. Introduction. Most diagnoses can be reached by a good and complete history and a thorough physical examination. Obtaining the history is an art that depends on the skills and method used to elicit the information. Now, challenges in the history. Communication skills, anxiety, language barrier with the patient and the educational background of the patient. Being a good physician, make the field patient comfortable. Doctor should be calm, caring, and allow the family members. Allow the time to express the patient to their problems and the reason why he seeks or she seeks the physician attention. Listen carefully without any distraction in order to obtain and interpret the clinical information provided by the patient. Now, first of all, we start our history by taking the biodata patient demography, name, medical record number, if he has any previous record, age, sex, religion, marital status, occupation, residence, mention the date and time, and who gave the history. I would like to add one point in the history. Can you please uh, go back? Yeah, the name. The name is very much important, and especially the second name. Uh, we sometimes forget to take a second name, son of, daughter of, wife of. So the second name is also very important in the history. Yes. Okay. Major components of the history begin with the chief complaint which the patient present to us, then history of the present illness for how much duration, then review of the systems, then ask about any past medical history, any past surgical history, family history, any history of medications, drugs, any history of allergies, social history, and in the end, blood transfusion history. We encounter the most common symptom, pain. For pain, we must ask few questions. The site, onset, character, severity, radiation, associated symptoms, duration, and exaggerating and the relieving factors. Now we begin with the first most common pain, renal pain. The site of the renal pain is ipsilateral costovertebral angle, just lateral to the sacrospinalis muscle and just below the 12th rib. The character of the renal pain is dull and constant ache. The renal pain is radiated towards subcostal area, umbilicus, and lower abdominal quadrant. This is due to the distension of the renal capsule. As shown in this picture, there is the dotted area. This, this is the localization of renal pain. And the area below this, this is the ureteric pain. Urethral pain. Urethral pain is usually acute and secondary to the obstruction. Pain radiates from costovertebral angle down to the lower anterior abdominal quadrant as shown in the previous slide. In men, the pain radiates towards bladder, scrotum, and testicles. In female, it radiates towards the vulva. Now, the urethral pain divides into different categories according to the location of the ureter. Proximal or the upper ureteric pain radiates towards the testicle. Mid ureteric pain on the right side, rever towards the right lower quadrant, towards the McBurney point, and the patient will simulate with the signs of appendicitis. On the left side, mid ureteric pain referred over left lower quadrant and the resemble with diverticulitis. On lower 
Urethral pain frequently produces the symptoms of bladder irritability, which includes frequency, urgency, and suprapubic discomfort. Third, vesicular pain. Vesicular pain is mostly due to over distension of the bladder or infection of the bladder. Chief complaint patient present with this terminal dysuria may be the sign of severe cystitis. Prostatic pain. Inflammation is due to the secondary edema and distension of the prostatic capsule. Prostatic pain is poorly localized either in the perineal region, rectal pain, or lumbosacral backache. Inflammation of the prostatic gland will produce irritative urinary symptoms, which include frequency, dysuria, and urgency. Testicular pain. Patient of testicular pain present either with acute pain or the chronic pain. If the patient has a history of acute pain, we think of epidemitis or the torsion of the testis. For chronic pain, there is hydrocele, spermatocele, varicocele. Chronic pain is usually dull and having heavy sensation does not radiate. Painless testicular swelling raises the suspicion of tumor. And sometimes, Testicular pain is due to the upper ureteric obstruction. Hematuria. What? One more thing, yes, uh, which we usually forgot in uh, history, especially in case of a uh, female patient who present with a pelvic pain, irrespective of the fact whether it's renal or ureteric. And catastrophe has happened many times for this. Uh, the menstrual history in the female is very important. In every female patient who present to us in our OPD with a pelvic pain or pain of a lower abdomen, we, and irrespective of the fact of any complaints, GG. we should ask menstrual history from every female. It's very important. Hematuria. Causes of hematuria include either stone, infection, or carcinoma. Carcinoma usually from the bladder or the kidney. In adults, silent hematuria must be regarded as a symptom of urologic malignancy until proof otherwise. Timing of hematuria is also important in history. If it is in the initial, it is due to the acute urethral lesion, either urethritis, stricture, and meatal stenosis. Terminal hematuria is due to posterior urethra, bladder neck, or from trigone. And total hematuria from tumor, stone, or due to tuberculosis. Lower urinary tract symptoms. We have divided the lower urinary tract symptoms into two, irritative and obstructive. Irritative is due to the storage symptoms, which include frequency, urgency, urge incontinence, and nocturia. Obstructive symptoms include hesitancy, loss of force, and decrease of the caliber of the stream, straining during voiding, interruption of the stream, that is intermittency, and post-void dribbling, and retention, either acute or chronic, and sense of incomplete bladder emptying. We must ask few questions if the patient present with lower urinary tract symptoms. Either there is history of diabetes mellitus for any neuropathic, then urologic intervention if their patient has any some previous history of urologic intervention, CNS problems and symptoms to rule out a neurogenic bladder, previous history of any urinary retention and catheterization, any history of burning micturition and febrile urinary tract infections, any history of drug, history of constipation, and history of any vertebral deformity. Incontinence. There are different types of incontinence. First of all, we discuss true incontinence, loss of urine without any warning. 
it mostly in patient who have previous history of radical prostatectomy extrophy of the bladder epispadias vesico vaginal fistula and ectopic urethral orifice stress incontinence stress incontinence urine loss with physical straining either in coughing laughing rising from the chair mostly it's occur in multiparous women or men who had radical prostatectomy urge incontinence urgency may be so precipitated and severe that it may cause involuntary loss of the urine also it is present in females because of poor anatomic sphincter overflow incontinence loss of urine due to chronic urinary retention or secondary to flaccid bladder aneurysis that is bed wetting mostly it is in children it physiologic up to the age of 2 to 3 years of life urethral discharge one of the most common urologic complaint in male the causes include either gonococcal or non gonococcal mostly it is nasaria gonorrhea or chlamydia trachomanias we must ask in this the history of extramarital affairs nematuria passage of gas strongly suggests either there is fistula between urinary tract and the bowel mostly is between bladder or urethra with the bowel carcinoma of the sigmoid colon either diverticulitis with abscess and ruptured or trauma will cause bladder fistula congenital anomalies account for most urethroenteric fistulas in children systemic manifestation of urologic symptoms ask about fever and chills it is usually present in case of pyelonephritis prostatitis epidermitis and epidemoarchitis history of weight loss is uh, present in advanced uh, stages of cancer past medical history systemic disease mostly that in fact genital urinary system include diabetes mellitus tuberculosis multiple sclerosis and schistosoma tubium for different causes we must ask about family history of either stone that we know cysteine stone and uric uric acid stones are common in families prostate cancer about 5 to 10% of all prostate cancer have either history in siblings or in parents father renal cell carcinoma also hereditary must ask about the drug history chronic use of paracetamol acetaminophen will increase the risk of rcc social history smoking it is a very important cause of renal cell carcinoma and transitional cell carcinoma of the bladder occupational history exposure of the chemical trichloroethylene will increase the risk of renal cell carcinoma and exposure of aniline dye will increase the risk of bladder cancer now the physical examination physical examination will begins with general observation visual inspection of the patient patient physique build ecoc status if the patient is cachexic think of any malignancy or tuberculosis pale mostly the patient of uh, bladder cancer present with paleness and look for gynecomasia in male for any endocrine disease alcoholism history and hormonal therapy for prostate cancer now the kidney first do the inspection fullness in costo vertebral angle may be consistent with cancer or perinephric infection and presence and persistence of indentations in skin from lying on underlying sheet suggest the edema of the skin secondary to perinephric abscess then the palpation of the kidney patient should lie in the supine position with a hard surface the kidney is lifted from the behind with the one hand 
and second hand is uh, placed in the anterior. The method of palpation is shown in the picture. That is, the posterior hand lifts the kidney upward, and the anterior hand will feel for the kidney. The patient will take a deep breath, and this causes the kidney to descend. As the patient inhales, the finger on the anterior hand are pring inwards at the costal margin. If the uh, kidney is enlarged, it will be felt on the anterior side. In neonates, palpation of the flank between the thumb anteriorly and the finger posteriorly on the costal vertebral angle. If we found enlarged renal mass, it will due to the either compensatory hypertrophy, hydronephrosis, tumor, cyst, or polycystic kidney. Tumor has a tendency of normal tissue or nodular, while if the kidneys are hydronephrotic, they are either firm or soft. Polycystic kidney usually present with nodular or firm mass. Acutely infected kidney pyelonephritis will have a tenderness. Percussion. Renal pain is diffusely felt in the back. Tendinal will be well localized in the lateral to the sacrospinalis muscle just below the 12th rib. Percussion is a special value in outlying enlarging mass, like in progressive hemorrhage in flank following renal trauma when tenderness and muscle spasm prevent the palpation. So, percussion is important. Last, auscultation. Auscultation will be done in costovertebral area and upper abdominal quadrant for renal brui present in renal artery stenosis, aneurysm, renal arteriovenous fistula. This is the area for auscultation in aorta, bilateral renal kidney, bilateral iliac, and the femoral area. For femoral artery brui, it is important in Larrichy syndrome, in which the patient has absent or decreased femoral pulse. Now examination of bladder. At least 150 ml of urine should be present to be felt in the adult. In bladder, percussion is better than palpation. A bimanual examination is good either abdominal rectal or abdominal vagical, but done in anesthesia is very valuable to assess the bladder tumor for extension. This is the method as shown for per rectal, abdominal rectal examination and abdominal vaginal examination. And then examination of external genitalia. In male, the penile should be examined, the position of the meatus should be noted. Either the opening external meatus is on the dorsal side to look for epispadiasis or on the ventral side to look for hypospadias. Superficial ulcers or vesicles may be present in case of herpes simplex or venereal warts may also be observed. If the patient is present with urethral discharge, gonococcal pus will be profuse, thick, and yellow or gray-brown in color. Non-gonococcal discharge are thin, mucoid, and scant in quantity. Bloody discharge mostly due to the foreign body in the urethra with the patient as present in our emergency with foreign body like stone struck in the urethra or either urethral stricture or tumor. Examination of the scrotum. It will reveal small sebaceous occasionally. As we have discussed, painful and painless. In painful, we will examine for torsion and epidermitis. We will do the friend's test in which elevation of the testis will cause relief of the pain. It's mostly in epidemi uh, epidemitis. But if the pain is not relief or either increase, we will think of torsion. Painless scrotal will include spermatocel, hydrocel, and varicocele. Examination of the testis. There is a hard area in the testis proper must be regarded as the malignant tumor until proof otherwise. We must do the transillumination test. It will be positive in hydrocele and look for test exposition. Either may be absent or transient as in physiologic retractile or in true cryptorchism. In the last, we must do the rectal and the prostate 
examination dre consistency of the prostate is similar to the consistency of the contracted thin hour of the thumb like thumb with the thumb completely opposed with the little finger and it is filled in this region the thin hour region it will do feel like a rubbery if it is stony hard it is due to the advanced carcinoma and also felt for the prostatic nodules which is due to the infection and our raised area above the surface of the gland with their edges will be gradually fades over but in the case of prostate cancer it is hard and has sharp edges with abrupt changes in the consistency on the same plane it is shown in the picture in this case we have a differential inflammatory area is raised above uh, the under surface of the gland and duration decreases at its periphery but in the case of prostatic nodule due to cancer it is not raised there is abrupt changes in the consistency and its edge thank you what is the uh, take home message from your presentation sir we must uh, took the thorough and the good history because history is very important most of the time patient will lead us towards the diagnosis with the history and physical examination well a uh, few days back i was taking the round in the ward sir few of our resident they don't know how to examine the abdomen especially when once you are doing the uh, urology you don't know how to palpate the kidneys how to auscultate the kidneys so i guess this presentation is very important to help them uh, to uh, to uh, basically it gives the indication what are the significance of the history and examination what is the method of examination what is the important of the examination and to to uh, establish a diagnosis to establish to what we say just to build the skills of your examination as uh, truly pointed out by dr pradeep and uh, nicely elaborated by dr far uh, history and physical examination lay the cornerstone of any Uh, patient management it is not only important for the exam point of view even if the clinic the patient is coming to you and without any proper history and clinical examination we cannot proceed further we don't know how to investigate and how to manage that patient it is not a cascade of the things that if we see the patient it is coming to a urological clinic we may advise all the prescribed investigations that we do routinely and uh, it will come out to uh, show some finding and we'll manage that it is not like that Uh, it can be done at the institutes that are running free of cost, or uh, usually we have the leverage of uh, prescribing all the investigations. But doesn't happen all over the world, and so a pertinent history and a pertinent examination is most important, so that we can shape up our uh, provisional diagnosis and we can investigate and work out the relevant diagnosis and manage the patient accordingly. So Dr. Fahad has uh, elaborated very nicely about all the pertinent questions uh, from starting from the pain. and towards uh, the low unit tract symptoms uh, obviously it can uh, more details are to be added and we can uh, go up and probe into details uh, but uh, a, a, a nice outline has been provided so uh, um, from my side the take home message is that uh, kindly try to take uh, if if not possible in the clinics a short pertinent history and a pertinent examination can also be done so that we can at the end of uh, our 2 to 3 minutes interaction or 5 minutes interaction that we have with the patient we can reach out our working diagnosis or provisional diagnosis so that we can shape up our investigation according to that thank you adnan the only way is practice and practice do the examination get the fi positive findings from the patient then actually you will come with some diagnosis and obviously i agree with adnan because we have the luxury of ultrasound and ct scans and most of the things the radiologists are telling us that this is the diagnosis but for our the clinical uh, practices we need to learn all these skills and methods to improve our clinical diagnosis thank you any other question